Welcome to this webinar about the CGR collaboration with the AFAO on AgroVoc. This webinar is organized by the Information and Data Management Committee of Practice of the CGR Platform for Big Data in Agriculture. And I'm Céline Aubé, the Communication Coordinator of the COP, and I will facilitate the webinar today. Uh, we'll have Ima Surbirat, Senior Information Manager and, and AgroVoc Manager at AFAO, and Christine Colchus, Information Manager Officer at the FAO and AgroVoc Curator. And I will uh, let Ima uh, present the other uh, people from your team that will uh, speak today. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, yes, we were told that um, this uh, presentation would be, uh, an, uh, let's say, uh, <clears throat> an occasion to present AgroVoc that most of you might know, but perhaps not in detail but also to introduce uh, some of the new developments in the context of agris, which are quite new and uh, perhaps are not known yet by the community uh, where this webinar is being placed today. So uh, since um, I would encourage to get lots of questions, I thought that would be a good idea to bring the AgroVoc team, which is composed by Christine and Andrea Durvati, and as well to bring the Agris technical team and content curator team, which is Fabrizio, Ilkay Holt, Zhuo uh, Cheng, who is uh, collaborating in both teams, and uh, Rejoin. These are the, are the teams. We have other members in, uh, in our team in FAO, but these are those that are undertaking activities more related to content. So let's move to AgroVoc. Uh, we uh, were thought, and we are also talking to uh, the ontology community of practice of, about doing some more cap dev activities about AgroVox. So we are going to get, give an, an overview, and uh, this could uh, be a starting point to discover or, or to discuss possibilities to go in more detail with cap dev because it requires AgroVox requires a certain point in time, some training. Um, Ex, um, activities to really get in, in deep. Before I forget, we also have uh, Esther uh, Mietz, uh, and I'm not sure whether Daniel, Daniel Martin is going to join, but they are also contributing. They are part of our AgroVoc team in FAO through collaboration with their organization, which is KTBL. So we are going to talk about Agris and AgroVoc. Let's just start with AgroVoc. Mm, you might know very well that AgroVoc is a multilingual thesaurus. It's um, available in up to 40 languages. We are now undertaking some works to uh, also cover uh, regional and national languages, official languages in Africa, like Swahili. And um, it's uh, managed by FAO, but this is, an, as a matter of fact, means that we are providing the infrastructure, we are providing the expertise, but in practical terms, we are collaborating with more than 25 institutions in 22 countries that are putting in kind resources in order to populate AgroVoc, either from the language perspective or the thematic perspective. We are covering all of uh, the areas of interest in, uh, to FAO. Next, Christine, thank you. So AgroHawk today is mostly used um, uh, as a tool for data to be classified homogeneously and is meant to facilitate interpretability, particularly um, when we talk about um, interpretability as well in the context of fair data. And we are also encouraging through AgroVoc the reuse of data. Um, it's quite easy to suggest new terms. We are um, um, updating AgroVoc every month, so editors can suggest either new concepts or they can simply suggest new terms. This is going to be discussed with the AgroVoc team and FAO for validation for the concepts, for the translations goes a little bit more straightforward. As I said, we are releasing AgroVoc every month. And we have a very diversified infrastructure. We have different elements that are helping us to really provide the services that we are meant to. This is more or less the representation of the country, uh, the, sorry, the institutions that are currently contributing to um, AgroVoc. And I would like to highlight the role that ICARDA is playing, which is crucial for us. In the, in the sense that they are taking um, or they are covering uh, the Arabic uh, translation of AgroVoc. 
Um, and, but you see that there is a kind of diversification. We have uh, people from the global south, institutions from the global south, and also we have institutions in Europe. Next, Christine, and I think that I will pass the, yeah, it's over to you, Christine, thank you. Thank you so much, Emma. Well, people often ask us, you know, how does the content workflow work? We are a very, very small team. And as Emma says, we could not do this without input from, from the editorial network. And uh, we're you know, also experts like yourselves working with data and with resources. We need to hear from you. And uh, we have an online infrastructure. Generally, people suggest things that we call Vocbench. That's the working pl online platform at the back end of it. It gets reviewed. We might ask questions, but very often ask questions. And we add alignments and definitions and, and uh, you know, alignments and having this with DRIs is very important as being part of, of being supporting fair data. And at the first of the month, we publish. The next release will probably be first or second of July. So uh, when we have complete information, it's relatively simple. And uh, we talked to the CGR task force yesterday. We'll come back to that. And uh, very, they've done a really interesting survey that discovered that many people do not know how to suggest information to Agrivoc. They might have a great new concept, but they don't know that we are actually very willing to hear from people like yourselves to uh, have suggestions of new concepts of areas we're not covering. But to do that, we really need to hear from people. And uh, it might be a new translation. It could be that you're working in a language that isn't covered enough or, and you need that for indexing, which could be a uh, publication or data set, or that you have a brand new concept which we need to put in. And the hard part is really, before it even reaches us, the hard part is what is the concept? What, you know, what is it? Not what it does, but what is it? What's the relationship to other concepts? Can you explain it? Is it something, it's a very niche, use or is it actually widely used? And these are all parts of finding linkages and alignments to other data sets and a thesauri so we can, uh, can link the data. So once it's in, we incorporate it. So I mentioned the task force and I'm sure there's some people from there here today. This is very, very exciting. We have a new cooperation. FAO has a new cooperation with several CJR institutes to join forces to look at exactly the issue of interoperability of information systems in our working area. So we're looking at how we're going to do it, but this is really going to be in a whole very exciting influx of new concepts, energy, and knowledge from the CJR. And at the same time, we will get, and FAO will benefit from having your expertise and terminology in these areas. So we are extremely pleased about this. So, and we're very happy to be here today. Lastly, before I hand back to Emma, and uh, have one more after that, is that uh, you might have heard that we have sub vocabularies or sub schemes within Agrivoc. And uh, this is just to kind of say, if you, if you have a glossary or you know, a defined terminology set, it is possible to, to link that to Agrivoc. Everything belongs in Agrivoc, but then it can be pulled out, for example, on uh, land governance, fisheries, or legal and policy issues. And uh, this is all a shared infrastructure. So we benefit from uh, having the same infrastructure, the same URI, shared translations, but it's possible to pull it out and uh, share this as a standalone resource for a more specialized community. So this is uh, this going on for a couple of years now and it's working, working well. And how it's working well, we can tell by looking at these statistics. So you can see um, the green and the blue boxes are just the growth in how we're seeing the resources used. And as Emma said, you can use the resources both on a single level looking up a concept. We can also download the entire data set of 39,000 concepts. And we're seeing a systematic growth across these platforms and modalities in, in, in how it's being used, which is really important to us because the lower box, you'll see the content evolution the number of concepts and terms and languages covered growing. But for us, the more interesting part is really that the terminology is useful and is being used. And these statistics show that. Over to Emma. I just wanted to show you that we are really trying to give as much visibility as possible to the institutions that are collaborating with uh, uh, Agrivoc and FAO in maintaining this um, 
this vocabulary. Now it's not yet there yet. We are going to publish this probably this week, but we are going to have a new page um, that is going to be a kind of, um, uh, well, we will have some, some information about the organization. We are also going to link to the publications we have from them related to Agdevoc. Also aggregating information about news and webinars and et cetera that is uh, going on under the file domain. We have quite a lot of stuff. This is why uh, we are not really considering that this page is going to get quite empty since uh, at the moment where we, we published. And we have been during last year, uh, due to the fact that we could not, we couldn't travel, we couldn't, we worked from home and we were teleworking. We did quite a lot of uh, work on in terms of uh, publishing. So if you really want to get more information about the editorial guidelines, we also want to get introduced very briefly through the brochure. You want to go you want to know more about the book, semantic data interoperability on food and agriculture, and also about how the editorial community has been developing, so has been increased over the last um, uh, three years, these are the main um, yeah, publications that you could access to. And definitely the two websites that we have now uh, available for Agrivog. I would suggest now that we move to Agris. Right well, we can just take one quick question from Elizabeth and then we can move to Agris. So Elizabeth was asking, how, how is or will the CGA term contribution be made visible in Agrivog? The terms are extracted from our research activities and by our domain experts. So this is also a knowledge sharing activity, not just a, a matter of data interoperability. Well, we are discussing this in the task force right now. One possibility would be to develop a sub vocabulary as what Christine was showing. So not so much to use the vocabulary as such, because we would not be coherent in the sense that you are using as well concepts along Agrivoc, but to make and to have an indicator, to have um, uh, a kind of tool that could help uh, you to um, evaluate how much you are contributing, how much you uh, you are uh, reflecting in terms of knowledge from CGIR into Agrivoc. How? So you we create a sub scheme and and you decide that you want to say, well, I'm interested in forestry tech. I'm interested in aquaculture tack. I'm interested in, I'm just being very general. And you can tack all the concepts that we have in Agravog that are of your interest. And you put them in your sub scheme. You could download this separately of, uh, from Agravog and to make your own analysis. You could even think about using this sub vocabulary, combine this with the statistics that we are getting in terms of usage of every single concept and to trace how often are they being used? So let's say that uh, one of the CG, uh, CGR centers decided to, to suggest one new concept and is, is published on Agrivoc. And you want to trace how often it's being used in the Agrivoc platform. You could combine this with your sub scheme with the statistics and match it. I don't know, Kristen, if you would like to, start, to add something. Sure, just to add, it's it's not that uh, a concept is contributed and belongs to someone or is attributed to someone. It's very much collective and shared. So once it's in, it can be translate. Others can add translations. Others can add definitions. If CR has good definitions, that would be fantastic. I think a scheme could be a nice way to lift out and make visible that in a very accessible way. Anything that was contributed by Worldfish or by Icarda, for example. And we've already had some really interesting collaborations with them. So we're happy to discuss what will be useful to you. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, I think that's, we could go through uh, Agris. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, we have uh, different new developments in the context of Agris that we thought that could be meaningful for uh, this, web, uh, this webinar. But just uh, to make sure that we are aligned about what Agris means is that Agris is a network essentially in primarily, we are we have a network of about 450 institutions in 150 countries. Not all of them active, as you will see, but this is the data that we have received. We also have a database. It's a database with uh, more than 30 million structured bibliographic records. We just ingested one million and a half recently. One million, Fauritsa needs to correct me. One million point three, I think. 
And, and this is what you know as a, the search engine. And then uh, we have uh, the portal. Well, essentially as a search engine. So the database is visible and accessible through uh, this uh, search engine. The domain that you see here, fa.org slash agris is covering mostly the network and agris.fa.org is covering mostly the database and the web portal. It's quite old. We are going to celebrate our 50th anniversary quite soon and has been there for quite, yeah, uh, covering the needs of the global south. So essentially, Agris is, is promoting the open access and the access to the scientific literature. And the purpose is really to facilitate the accessibility and visibility of what is being produced in all the FAO uh, um, so organizations coming from our FAO member countries. And in us, as in the case of Agrovo, covering all the areas of interest of FAO. We are encouraging the use of Agris in, in, in terms of different types of profile from uh, high level to more science, students, um, uh, librarian, scientists, policymakers, et cetera. We accept very um, broad types of content. And um, yes, uh, more or less, is, I hope that this is something that is more or less known in, in the CGIR since the centers uh, your centers have been contributing to Agris for a while next. This is the network. Uh, we have actually the correct number is 482, uh, but active is about 200. Why? Because um, we have lots of, uh, or lots of centers that don't exist anymore, that they were officially uh, appointed by uh, the ministries of agriculture in the 70s, but over the times, uh, over the years, they have disappeared. So therefore we are custodian in a way of a lot of metadata and data that is not available anywhere else on the web. Uh, we have non-active 291, but non-active means that many of them are deprecated. We are cleaning up this list. And you can see we are all, all over the place. So it's uh, quite internationally um, um, yeah, um, known, exactly. Yes, so this is more or less the period of time where we, um, we uh, our team took over uh, Agris, um, which is what uh, was about 2017. We have been doing, as Fabrizio will show, a lot of work to harvest um, uh, organizations, in improving our infrastructure to facilitate this process. Uh, we are um, more or less into 12.5 now with the harvester in place. We hope that this number is going to slowly, slowly increase more often than uh, it was in the past. And I think that I will ask Ilkay uh, to take over the presentation from here. She is the, our content curator, Agri's content curator. Thank you, Ma. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be you know, part of this, this webinar and uh, I will try to tell you a bit more about what you know, services that we are providing for um, data providers, what we offer to them. So first of all, I, I, mean, I will go in briefly on each of these items, but we will, um, they are able to actually browse and discover their own institutional collections. Um, they are, they are, I mean, hopefully they are actually increasing their institutional visibility via, via the search engines. I will try to explain some of the main features in the institutional dashboard. These, you know, two, um, two last items about the training and guidance and help desk. I won't go into details about these things, but as an agris team, we do provide where and when needed, um, if needed, you know, all the trainings and webinars and, you know, guidelines for our data providers. We also have, you know, help desk and you know, we have, um, you, know, my, I know our colleagues actually are helping with their questions or when they need any further information. First of all, I will try to remind you about all these, you know, uh, services to be able to actually access and use, use them properly, you need to be able to, you know, log into the institution, institutional, you know, dashboard. If um, any of, you know, our providers don't have the access credentials, login credentials to the dashboard, then, you know, you can always, you know, ask for these, you know, credentials either through a form that we have, you know, I can actually share the links with you, or you can easily just email us at um, agris at fao.org. So this is something to remember, actually, to be able to uh, benefit from the services uh, which, was, which are offered um, under, under ACRIS. Let me uh, try to tell you a little bit more about you know, how um, these institutional collections are 
are visible in within Agris. Basically, data providers um, are offered these um, separate, you know, per permanent, you know, links to their uh, digital collections, and this is um, this is to increase their the institutional visibility within Agris, you know, database. Obviously, overall, the portal and the database itself uh, offers, you know, different, you know, search capability. But you know, if they want to, they can also just separately search and browse their institutional digital collections. Um, again, they can, if they want to, our data providers, they can also link these uh, collections on their uh, institutional websites. And hopefully, again, overall, this is to increase the usage of their collections. In the next slide, I'm just, you know, uh, showing you an example of how to browse an institutional collection on Agris database. Normally, if you're not actually logged into the system at agris.fao.org, uh, you only see this, you know, on the left screen, left of the screen. Now I see the Agris database. You only see the search box. You only those, you know, uh, see those facets by language, by countries, and the type of, you know, resource types. You only see those, but you don't actually see the filter by data providers. Uh, if you actually log into the uh, database, then you are able to, as a data provider, you see these you new know, filters and you are able to select the country, select the data providers by the country. So if you want to actually look up for your own new institutions, then I actually did uh, this example on the uh, Malaysia the World Fish Center, for instance, but I will show you a couple of examples with that. On the right hand, um, sorry, on the right hand, um, hand side of the um, slide, you just uh, saw the list of uh, those those uh, data providers. Here you are uh, seeing an example of a search within a collection. For instance, the collection is here from Belarus Agricultural Library. Within that collection, I'm able to actually search uh, these digital collections just uh, individually, not the Agris as a whole. I am trying to actually show here how to direct the link to uh, your uh, digital uh, collections or your institutional collections. After uh, selecting, after you know what, what we selected in the previous, uh, so, you know, screenshots like you saw, in the in the URL you can actually see the address ID. ID. In this example, we have Q V W sorry zero. Um, this is like a permanent link um, to your um, digital collection, and at the bottom on the at the bottom of the slide you see another way of actually accessing your collection, which is in the again institutional dashboard under the description of the data provider. You can actually take that link to in the access access your collection. So the list of services that I talked about, the second item was about the visibility. Agris is trying to facilitate, facilitate this, you know, indexing of these collections, you know, by Google, Google Scholar, Bing, and others. Uh, as mentioned, as Emma also, you know, mentioned while she was talking, you know, we have millions of hits you know, to Agris. That is a big, you know, uh, added value, you know, for uh, Agris data providers because, you know, some of the data providers that we have, especially, you know, from um, Global South, you know, they may not have the uh, human resources or the infrastructure to, you know, to make, you know, their collections more visible. So we try to do our best, you know, to increase their uh, visibility uh, real time if possible. So here I just go into the user statistics. Again, these statistics, you know, can be accessed in the institutional dashboard. Um, this basically provides you a user st statistics, you know, based on the Google Analytics. Uh, this is just to see, you know, individual okay, institutional statistics, but this also helps you know, institutions for reporting purposes, for instance, to the upper management. I also wanted to you know, mention that this kind of um, improvements on the portal and at the back end uh, as a result of our communication with the network uh, in 2020. So I just wanted to add, it, add um, note here. So we see here an example uh, of an institutional page for user statistics. I took the example of you know, the World uh, Fish Center. Um, again, as I said, you can access your collection from this page. You can see the page views. You can see the you know, country visits. And if you scroll down on this page, what you are going to see next is uh, this page. So you can actually see all these you new know, statistics either within the same year or you can actually see them uh, for the for the past years. Uh, in this you know, example, again, I'm just showing you 2020 um, statistics. Uh, again, just note that because I'm not going to show an example, but you can also see the country visits on the same page. Again, if you uh, scroll down on the same page in your institutional uh, 
backend, you know, in the institutional dashboard, you also see the top 15 most visit, visited um, records in Agris from your own collection. This also gives you an idea, you know, what is used most in Agris. And these are all actually clickable lists, so you can actually visit the records themselves. Here's a um, here's a snapshot. Actually, something similar came up in in Emma's uh, slides anyway for Agrawalk. Um, this is a mock-up, and it will be actually deployed in either this week or next week for uh, institutional. Um, sorry, for data providers, institutionally, we try to actually make their visible as much as possible. Uh, when you go to the Agris um, Agris page, sorry, Agris portal, and if you actually select the um, Agris data providers list. All, all of the actual data providers are clickable and you go to their profile. So when you go to their profile, what you are able to see is that obviously the description, like I um, try to you know, point out here. But secondly, you can also uh, see what we are actually indexing from these institutions. I want to point out that these type of resources can be different. Like it could be a library catalog, it could be a repository, it could be a journal, and sometimes it could be actually all of them. So we are trying to uh, display all of them and give more visibility to their own resources. And at the bottom, what you see is that you know any relevant news item on our domains is also linked to those you know profiles so that anyone actually visiting these institutions can see what is happening out what's happening apart from indexing their data uh, metadata in this um, thing one last thing before i uh, go to the next slide i want to mention this activity status this is quite important partly i also mentioned not all of the you know, data providers are active in the in the agris network i think if i'm not wrong 40 percent about 40 percent of them now active we do make the efforts to say who is active and who is not active because sometimes uh, some of the metadata or the records are not you know uh, available to the users uh, maybe it is worth to describe what is what is active for us any data providers uh, any data provider who didn't provide any metadata in the last year in the last calendar year is categorized as uh, inactive next um, slide please thank you this is actually my last you know, talking point. I wanted to give you a snapshot about um, what do we have from CGR centers in, in Agris. If I'm not wrong, 11 of them actually are here and only four of the CGR centers are not indexed in, in Agris. In this you know, in the GAN snapshot, you see how many records you know, we have, all of them, and what was the first date that we have been collaborating with them or since since when um, you can also see you know since 2006 you know what are the uh, page views for for each of them uh, along you know among this this uh, list of uh, cgr centers worldfish has been the uh, active one so i think yeah in 2000 2020 even this year we have been receiving metadata from them so at this point i would just encourage you or the, all our CGI centers to get in touch with us you know to uh, update their records at this point i will just you know leave the floor to fabrizio to tell you about more at the technical level thank you thank you Ikai. um as uh, Ikai and Dima has already explained in the last few years uh, we have invested a lot of effort in um uh, creating new services around Agris, especially after some consultations uh, and other feedback uh, that we had uh, from the community. Ilkay has already um, introduced you to the Agris institutional dashboard. Here I want to talk about uh, three, three services. The two main goals are uh, to make the life easier for data providers uh, when they have to contribute to Agris and also to simplify uh, the, the, the time, to simplify the process for the Agris team in order to index uh, uh, new data into Agris. Uh, with this goal in mind, uh, we created uh, what we call ADU, which is the automatic data upload uh, module. Uh, this is basically a service uh, that allows a uh, data provider uh, that is already registered as an Agris data provider uh, to upload the, the data directly through the portal. So in the past, uh, uh, we were managing uh, uh, the data ingestion through emails. So receiving email attachments or 
for example, if some data providers had like an FTP website. Uh, now we want to make uh, data providers uh, more autonomous uh, and uh, free to uh, contribute whenever they want. So if they have access to the institutional sub portal uh, the dashboard with the same login, they can also access uh, ADU. As you can see from this screenshot, you have a statistics button to go to the dashboard and uh, to the uh, to access all the statistics and then you have also the possibility to upload new data i have to tell you that this is uh this will be uh, released uh, uh by the end of the summer probably in july uh it's ready but we are improving it uh, and uh, we are ready to start um, using it uh, and to ask data providers to use it and um, uh, as we see in the next slide um basically it is just a, a web interface uh, personalized for the specific data provider in which the data provider can upload uh, a single xml file or uh, a, a zip file containing more records uh, in this page uh, as you can see the arrow number one uh, uh, you can see that the metadata format uh, is already given. So uh, the idea is that uh, uh, there is still a manual validation process with new data providers, uh, and there is uh, an agreement between the data provider and the agris team about the metadata format, and there is also a quality control. So once uh, uh, the data provider and the agris team decided what is the metadata format for that data provider, this is like registered, uh, in the system and the uh, data provider can only uh, contribute to Agris uh, uploading records uh, in that metadata format. This can be changed, of course, communicating with the Agris team if there is a need, but the metadata format is highlighted in this page. And then simply the, the data provider can just select a file from the computer, add a custom message and upload. And you see at the end of the page, uh, there is also an upload history uh, especially when uh, the upload is successful, because behind the scene, uh, the system is controlling the syntax of the records uploaded, is controlling, is doing some quality control, and there will be messages in case there are uh, there are uh, there are errors. Uh, now I want to talk to you about another service, uh, which is uh, which is live. This is actually already working; it's already in place, and this is the Agri service there. Um, one of the needs of the of the community was to for was that Tagris had to be able to automatically uh, harvest records when a data provider could expose it uh, as uh, OIPMH. Uh, uh, so using like an, um, a web service that Tagris could use to harvest those records. This is why we developed uh, an harvester in Python. And uh, this harvester is part of the FAO infrastructure now, uh, and it runs automatically. So at the moment, uh, it is running every three months, but this number can be changed. Uh, we just launched it uh, in uh, June uh, 2021, so this month. Uh, and it's using uh, Apache Airflow to automate everything. And as soon as the harvester finishes the execution, the Agris team receives a notification and can access the output log uh, where we can see also if there are like errors or if everything went straightforward. Uh, we still need to select, uh, to manually select uh, the OIP and endpoints. So there is still a manual work to do at the beginning. Uh, to uh, investigate whether uh, there is a metadata format uh, which is suitable for Agris, uh, whether the endpoints is working. And then uh, we add this information in a Google Drive spreadsheet, which is automatically uh, accessed by the harvester. Uh, and uh, uh, clearly this allows automatic harvesting on a um, periodic basis. Uh, those are some numbers about our first execution. So as I told you, we run uh, the harvester this month for for the first time, and um, uh, we selected uh, 30 data providers, and the harvester was able to download uh, almost 3 million records. Uh, many of these records were already indexed in Agris, um, and also here the process is automatic. Uh, we have uh, the duplication process to check if a record already exists in Agris. Uh, so what happened is that uh, uh, two days ago, on June 14, we were able to add to the Agris database 
uh, more than 1.1 million uh, new records. And uh, this is pretty exciting. It's the first time uh, uh, we, we execute the harvester. And we are also doing some uh, research activity because this is not just uh, an harvester. Uh, we were also experimenting some uh, machine learning techniques uh, uh, to make the harvester smarter and uh, so that the harvester was able to identify the topics of uh, uh, a record and also if the record belongs or not to, uh, to Agris. But this is still not um, in place, so we are still researching on that, but uh, what I want to communicate is that this is not just uh, a simple harvester, we are trying to make it also smart. I want to give you an idea of the Agris data ingestion and also the complexity of the Agris data ingestion and why uh, we are trying to automate uh, the process. So if you see on the left, uh, at the beginning, uh, we had only, uh, we were able to index only records received by emails uh, and FTP. Now we have other two services. We have the harvester, which makes transparent for the data provider the indexing of new records into Agris because it's a component living uh, in its own space and executing on a periodic basis, downloading new records and uh, putting those records uh, in a place that Agris is able to, uh, to, to, to process and then to index the records. And then we have also ADU. Uh, in the middle, there are several other components that we use uh, to process the records. This is the input module. It's based on a module that we use to transform uh, different metadata formats to the Agris uh, uh, internal uh, metadata format, which at the moment is Agris AP, the application profile. Then we do a semantic enrichment with the RDF co converter. And finally, we index the records. Uh, this part, uh, thanks to the harvester and the DU, in the near future can be completely automated. Uh, because as you can see now, ADU is not using the input module anymore. It already converts the files uh, in the Agris internal format. Very soon also the harvester will be able to do it. Once the input module will be integrated in the harvester and the ADU, also the other steps will be automatic. So it's also easier uh, for Agris uh, to make everything automatic and to index records when the harvester um, is ex executed or when a data provider uploads uh, the files uh, through ADU. Uh, I have another service that I want to briefly mention to you, uh, and it is the open uh, data set. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, this is a service uh, for the entire community, not only for uh, the um, uh, Agris data providers. Uh, the idea behind this service is to make available a subset of Agris, of the Agris database, under the CC BY 3 IGO license, so that uh, uh, other people can reuse uh, uh, records that are also in Agris. Clearly, we cannot open the entire Agris database. Uh, so in order to uh, participate uh, to the Agris open data set, a data provider must opt in and give us authorization to publish their records uh, under this license. Currently, uh, the open data set uh, contains records from 174 data providers, and there are more than 1 million records. And uh, we think that in the future, this number can be increased a lot. So um, I am done with, uh, with the services and I think the team has uh, something else to tell you. Yeah, actually, no, just to mention very briefly that uh, I would like to link Agris with Agrivoc, which is uh, what we were mentioning at the beginning. So we try really to facilitate this discoverability. We encourage people to use Agrivoc or any vocabulary that is standardized. Uh, this is our objective and uh, hoping that this will support the, 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 the organizations to share this data more, more efficient, efficiently. Christine, the next. And just to mention very briefly as well, that uh, Agris is not only a service provider, we are also a data provider. For many organizations, we are the primary um, uh, source where they are publishing their data. So this is very common with uh, providers that are coming from the global south and they are leaving the metadata in Agris and I counting with the services that Ilikai was showing, particularly the link to their own collections to embed this um, in their website and to expose the data that they are having uh, is being hosted by Agris as their own data from their own organizations. This is helping them as well uh, quite a lot 
to show more cost efficiency in their organizations while they are benefiting of being linked to a global community. And with these slides, it's over. Just to, uh, if, you, if you move to the last one, Christine, just to mention that we are going to have our Agres virtual animal conference in the 1st of July. We have about 900 people that have registered we don't expect that all of them are coming going to come but it's a it's an interesting number people are interested and if you are also interested in learning more uh, about agrivoc we are having our internal meeting on agrivoc on the 25th uh, 29th if you would be interested email us and we will send to you uh, the credentials to access said that uh, this is all the overview that we wanted to show about agrivoc and as as we were requested we added as well last developments about agris hoping that in this way this particular cop is going to have a better overview about where agris is today thank you so much on behalf of all the team and we are happy to receive any questions thank you very much Ima. thank you christine fabrizio ilke and uh... Uh, all the people from the team for, for your presentation. Well, Abenet has, has a question from CGS Center noticed that the, the Agris was not attributing or was attributing the one the wrong center from CG space. So is it corrected now? And can we check that we have on our system and make the necessary correction if needed? Yeah, I, I think that here the problem is that there is no or has not been a consistent consistent way of from CGIR to share the data with Agris. And this might have caused some issues in the past. I think it's time now to really uh, sort it out, to clean it up. And definitely, uh, Abenet, uh, in your case, um, uh, being, um, being in the CG space is, is probably an occasion to, to see what is what it don't work out because um, it's simply, I think it has to do with kind of legacy there. Abenet. So I think it's possible to clean it up. And if you are interested, we can look at it yeah, into that. Thanks, Ima. So now Bosun has a question. Yeah, Bosun was asking, is there an on-demand platform to access the trainings on Agris? Right. We have a platform which is called Knowledge. Um, here, Hikai has to remind Knowledge me. sharing. Knowledge Lab. Uh, knowledge Lab. Lab. Lab and it's a Moodle uh, platform. And um, we, we, we are planning to upload mini kind of mini MOOCs. Yeah, mini, very mini. So it's about one week. So that when an institution decides to be part of Agris, they have to do this course. They have to understand the principles about um, how to, to be part of Ag Agris, how they can contribute, but in, in this kind of stuff, not aiming anything else than making sure that they understood where they are contributing uh, with their data. Um, we are, our milestone right now is 1st of July because of the virtual meeting. But after that, we were planning to start looking at uh, how to deliver this MOOC, hopefully at least one uh, pilot in 2021. But um, otherwise, we, we still have everything in place to start working on that in January next year. It's the same platform that we are going to use for Agrovoc, as we uh, mentioned yesterday to the task force um, where Boston, that Boston is, is chairing. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, would you like to, to ask your question? Thank you, Celine. I could unmute this time. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for the detailed presentation. It was very informative. Um, so uh, first, we understand very well from your presentation the importance of contributing a good content to Agrovoc because in the end, Agrovoc is used to label records in Agris. So the, the quality of the, the, our record retrieval will all, of course be based on the quality of the concept we can submit to Agrovoc. So I think it is a value uh, mm -hmm. added that we need to, to mention uh, in, in, our, in our effort to strengthen our contribution to Agrovoc. And uh, my, my, so this was more uh, uh, comment, but my, my question was in your, in your sense, uh, if you had, uh, what would be the added value of Agris compared to Guardian if we had to explain uh, it 
Is it because we will be pushing our data or metadata into a different ecosystem of data providers that are not part of Guardian? Uh, also get uh, multilingual access to our, our records? Do you think those are elements? Well, the point here, probably Meda is, is the right person because I, I don't have a full understanding about the last developments from Guardian. Okay. Um, not, I don't know, Meda, whether you want to jump in or? Sure. Um, you know, I, I think what we've tried to do is to create a resource that really um, goes, I mean, it, it does make uh, uh, resources available, knowledge available it, to, to advance the state of the research, but we're trying to focus a lot on data and, and actually not only being able to discover the data, but actually build the pipelines from the data to uh, you know, spatial analysis, to, to crop modeling possibilities. So that now you're, you're creating an ecosystem of not just being able to discover the, the, the data itself, but act on it. So it's much more researcher focused in that sense, um, in terms of you know, being, being able to uh, build those kinds of pipelines and analytical uh, uh, insights out so that you, know, you don't have to take the data and go somewhere or just find the data and then figure out what to do with it, uh, but actually work in it through the CG Labs uh, uh, environment, which is very much connected to Guardian, but not only to Guardian. I mean, what, what we enable through CG Labs is for people to bring data in from Guardian, you know, large uh, climate data sets uh, that sits, sit in, in the German uh, climate uh, center, uh, uh, you know, the CHIRPS data set, which I think is stewarded by NASA, uh, other NASA climate information, and try to let people have access to those as well as uh, to, to GitHub for, for development of code and analysis of that actual stuff, uh, uh, you know, connections to um, our libraries for people to, again, uh, do, do the work that they need with the data. So I, I guess I would say that that's probably one of the primary differences uh, is, is the sort of our, our emphasis more on, on, okay, so what happens after people find this data? What can they actually do with it? That's where we're trying to focus energies. I don't know, Ima, if that, that tries, to, you know, I've tried to clarify where uh, the differences might be. Yeah, well, I don't know about, I mean, and the question was coming from Elizabeth. In Agris, what we can provide is a way that the centers, the, C, the, the CGIR centers can monitor the use of the primary metadata that they are generating for publications and data in a completely independent way and uh, so that they can use as well as indicators internally in their organizations. But this is, is, is let's say, in a kind of a basis in the sense that you are publishing a metadata in CG space. Do you want to share the metadata with us? Do you want to make sure the metadata is divided by different um, or is, is, is set it, set it uh, by different um, centers? Well, then at least as a use case, because we can help to really make sure that you are not simply giving us the metadata or right away and you lost, you lose track. What we are now in a position is to facilitate a process where you can continue uh, making sure that you know what's going on with your metadata. Uh, it's quite unusual because if you go to other search engines that are having a kind of use case similar to Agris, you might not get this, uh, this, this service because usually search engines think more about the end user. In our case, we decide to prioritize the data providers because uh, our role as well in, in terms of um, uh, collecting as, as, as many organizations that need this support as possible. Now that we have this set up and we are going to finalize all the services that we had in mind, according to the consultations we did in 2020, we are going to start improving the usability of the search uh, engine itself. What can be more friendly? What we can improve? And what we would love to have as well uh, your input in that if there is anything that could help CGIR uh, in order to um, 
in order to um, to get more indicators, to, to, to I don't know, whatever you need. We are happy to be there. And you know, many of you know already the team that is here today, you know that we are very much in, interested in talking and learning from you as well. And it's changing ideas and knowledge. So, um, but just to let you know, we focus more in data providers first and to uh, make sure that we could consolidate the network. And now we are going to work on uh, from the user perspective. So Ima, actually I have a follow on question then. Um, how exactly are you going to provide, what is it that you anticipate providing back? So you talked about this, you know, this cloud of, of um, uh, uh, the, the, the actual metadata that, that's, that exists that any center has uh, provided you, and, and actually the records themselves, if I'm not mistaken, you, you can send, you can, you can provide that back to the, to the provider to, um, to kind of, uh, you know, to represent on, on their own websites uh, in, in, along with the enrichments and along with the cleaning and stuff that you've done. Is that, did I understand that correctly? Well, this is one of the services in the sense that yeah. you can embed the, the, the link with uh, the identification of the user, the, um, sorry, the data provider. And, um, and yes, you can play with it. I mean, uh, but I understand and this particular, this particular service might not be very useful for CGIR because you have already nice information systems where you're exposing your own data as a primary source. Uh, this is uh, meant for when we talk about organizations with a very, very uh, weak infrastructure and they are they really need support from FAO to do so. In your case, I think that perhaps one of the things that the centers would be interested in is the statistics to monitor whether the work that they are doing um, in terms of uh, providing data to agri, agri is, is useful or is not useful, whether you are getting the, the back your expectations, et cetera. Um, or, uh, but this, this is true. I mean, and, and here Avenet had a good point is that the, the, the data that we have about from the, the centers right now is not okay. We need to really, uh, I would say even to upload some of this new data, but as well to clean up some of the data that we have, to look at the duplicates, to just to understand what has happened, whether it was because we harvested Guardian at a certain point in time, and this uh, was, uh, I don't know, and then CG space. So uh, I think that uh, here would be good to look for a more coherent way that works for both um, a CGIR and FAO in order to make sure that this can take place um, quick. I mean, because it's not rocket science, essentially what we are talking about. Thank you very much for, for this discussion. I'm sure it could continue via the task force. So I really thank you all for joining this uh, webinar. Thanks a lot for the Agris and FAO team for your presentation and for taking the time to take the questions. Thank you. Thank you. thank you for inviting us. And thank yes, you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Just We're always happy to talk. <laughs> Have a nice bye afternoon. Bye.